in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed and so if and when you choose to follow the path of the spiritual man, it then means you have to trust the Holy Spirit's leadership for the spiritual intelligence that you will have to navigate that path. The Bible says there is a path or a way that seemeth right. It seems right. Even darkness looks like light from afar. It is when you come close, you will find out that it was not light. So it seems right. Sometimes you can follow that path and it's after 12 years you will know you are wrong. That would be a waste of time and a waste of destiny. Are we together? So we're discussing the path of the spiritual man. It's very important for you to know this. The Bible says the earth was so designed that it cannot have life and meaning until and unless it is connected to the spirit realm. Are we together? The economy of the kingdom is tied on this principle. It is the spirit realm first and then the earth only becomes the child of the spirit realm. That means you are already at a loss if you discuss things and deal with things naturally alone. Are we together now? That your first port of call, either in creation or in correction or in managing anything physical is that you must go to the realm of the spirit and make those changes there and then you can expect that the changes will manifest physically i need you to understand this as a foundation so our results in the physical realm are only report cards to the health of our understanding the spiritual dynamics if I see your life marred with poverty and failure, I don't care what business you are doing and I don't care what you are not doing physically. I know that number one, there is an error in your understanding this principle. You have neglected something in the spirit that is showing in the physical realm. Are we together? And then if I look at your life and I find favor, grace, wisdom, I will not credit it to the physical thing that seems to be what is bringing you the result. No. There must be something you have done correct in the realm of the spirit. Listen, if you have this understanding, it is half your challenge is solved. That means the problem is never the boss in the office. No. You are already getting it wrong. The problem is not the absence of land. The problem is not even the infirmity in your body. The problem is that the physical realm is helplessly under the influence of the realm of the spirit. <laughs> Failure to know this will only waste your time, waste your energy, waste your resources. This is the mystery behind profitless living where people follow the path of the natural man with no honor and no appreciation for the realm of the spirit. The Bible says, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things we now see, are we together now? We're not made of things which do appear. In John chapter 1, Apostle John was now um, teaching us something. It was his synoptic account but he approached it from a very intelligent standpoint. He says, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Verse 2 says, the same was in the beginning with God. By verse of emphasis is verse 3. It says, through him. 
Are we together now? Where all things, all things were made by him. How many things? It didn't say all material things. That means even when we go to the realm of the spirit, the, way, the word of God is still gained supremacy. It made everything. The word of God did not just make the material things. All things were made by him. And without him, that means outside of his influence, was not anything made that was made. Hallelujah. So there is nothing that is ever made genuinely made that honors God and blesses the saints that did not come in partnership with the word of God. All things were made by him and there was not anything made without him that was made. So this is very important. The spiritual man approaches his faith adventure from the realm of the spirit. That is the realm of creation. That is the realm of correction. That is the realm of adjustment. That is what gives us audacity. We face life to the degree to which we know and understand that we have done our due diligence as far as the realm of the spirit is concerned. When David came to confront Goliath, it would be stupid of that small boy to stand before this man with six fingers and six toes using the strength of the flesh. He mentioned very clearly the basis of his approach. He said, you come to me with your bows and spheres. Goliath, you are dead already. I come to you in a name. He didn't say, I came to you by a sling. The sling is there, but I can't give credit to the sling. You see, he honored the fact that he, the basis of his confidence was because certain things had been sorted in the spirit. Any part of Goliath the sling hit, he would have killed him because Goliath died before he died. Are we together now? So it's important for us to understand this. This is spiritual intelligence God is giving us. Immediately, an intelligent Bible student can begin to suggest what may be wrong if you are not getting the results, can tell you this. The church will not just increase because of billboards and telling people just come. No, you're making a mistake already. Increase does not reside within the world of men. Is it not in your Bible? Paul planted, Apollos watered. Who gave the increase? So increase is not affordable. There is nowhere on earth that sells increase. There is no product as increase in the earth. Buy increase anywhere. It's a commodity that is not earthly. You have to outsource the realm of the spirit to purchase that commodity called increase. Listen. Please, while you're rejoicing, I hope you're, I, I need to drum this foundation. You wouldn't believe that. Now, listen, listen. Anytime you find there are rocks that a few scientists have been able to bring from another planet. Is that true? And they look at it and say, this is not of earthly origin. They carbon date them and tell you this rock belongs to another planet. Increase is a commodity. It is not sold in the earth, but it can be used in the earth. You can, you can purchase increase like a product from the realm of the spirit and bring it to the earth and you will see its value. People can look at you and say, no, I, I see the fruit of increase. You have this increase. Hmm. <laughs> Yeshua. Yeshua. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
Sit down. My assignment tonight is to bring you to a place in the spirit where you can do this strange spiritual transaction to teach you how to do business in the realm of the spirit. By business, I don't mean buying and selling. That's in the realm of men. In the realm of the spirit, we don't buy and sell. No. Please pay attention. Pay attention. Hallelujah. Bring me two ladies now that will shout loud under the anointing. Please hold them and bring them now. Mechanical shout. The power of God is coming on two ladies. Please. It's the glory forever. That is true for one in ministry. You are a man of God. That is true for a whatever it is. The modus operandi and the protocol is that it be done in earth as it is in heavens. So you need to find out how it is in heaven first. In Job chapter 38 and verse 33. Job was a man who at this time was frustrated because of the plethora of problems that had come upon Job. Verse 33, 38, 33. And he spoke, he says, knowest thou the ordinances of heaven? No, you import the technology that made that domain the way it is. Now, there are many sincere believers who want to see the outstretched arm of God. They want to experience, in, uh, to experience increases. But most times, we have well-intentioned desires, but we lack the spiritual understanding as to how to be able to transport these realities. Now I want to show you the keys. Please pray in the spirit in one minute that the Lord would open your eyes. Hallelujah. 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 There is a woman here you have been trusting God for the fruit of the womb. I'm seeing four years. One, two, three, four. Who is that person? Four years. I, I'm, I'm teaching, but the Lord just spoke to me. It's time for you to come and receive. Are you sure? Where are you coming from? You're here? Can I pray for you? Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare, even by the Spirit of God, according to the time of life, The anointing is coming on one of you right now. Who is in front here? Right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I call upon he who has the key of David. The Bible says that opens and no man can shut. For the womb is a gate even in the realm of the spirit. And by the authority of the holder of that key, we declare your wombs, a fata, be opened. In the name of Jesus Christ, be opened above and against every power of witchcraft and the enchantments of men in the name of Jesus Christ. Let it be as he has spoken by the power of the word of God. Return with your testimonies. Let this ordeal and this plague come to an end in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Let me have your attention again. You can return back to your seat, please. So, let me start by revealing to us what is the first key that controls enlargement, controls increase in the kingdom. Following the path of the spiritual man. There is a technology that God has made available for the saints in light. That if and when activated, just leave those under the anointing. When they are fine, they can go back. We don't call them out just for show. There is something the Spirit of God is doing. Are we together? Yes. Increase.
increase. Three people are running out now by the anointing. Please hold them so they don't injure themselves. The power of God is coming and begin to run physically. It's a grace for speed. Please help them so they don't injure themselves, whether you are an usher or not. Hmm. This is what happens when the glory of the Lord is revealed. This is more than some spiritual jamboree. I know that, unfortunately, spiritual things have been abused and mismanaged. And sometimes when we see some of these manifestations, please make no mistake to think this is just a display of flesh. There are people who fear God and by the grace of God have been taught well even by the Spirit. The goal of all this is to bring maximum edification to the body and no glorification of self in any way whatsoever. Hallelujah. What is the first key? Number one. For everyone who truly desires to step into levels of increase, the first key is to sustain the seeing eye and the hearing ear. Please write it. It is impossible for you to tap into the realm of increase without the blessedness of the seeing eye and the hearing ear. If this is where we stop tonight, then God be glorified. Let's discuss this. Proverbs 20 and verse 12 says, the seeing eye, 2012, the hearing ear and the seeing eye, it is the Lord that made both of them. Now listen, he made them as a gift that there is the advantage of a seeing eye. Now notice, the Bible never said ears and eyes. It says a hearing ear. That means not every ear hears. A seeing eye. That means not every eye sees. Don't, don't assume you understand what I'm saying. Just listen carefully. There is a seeing eye and there is a hearing ear. And the Bible says God made them. These are not biological materials at all. We are not talking of this and this. This and this is only a physical parallel. Are we together? Help those under the anointing. Sight. Please look at me. Sight, even in the physical realm, is a combination of two factors. Apostle Felix, sight is a product of your eyes plus light. Is that true? It's impossible to have sight just because you have an eye. It is the union of your eye plus light. If we switch off the light in this beautiful auditorium and still leave your eyes, you will stop seeing even though you have eyes. So you cannot say I have sight just because you have an eye. It takes more than an eye to have sight. Is someone listening now? The eye is a necessary tool for sight, but not the only reason for sight. For some of you, you have the eye component. The missing ingredient is the light. The most important element that your car has in the night is the headlight. Not the color of the car. Not even the kind of the car. I don't care what kind of car you have. If it does not have high level illumination in the night, you are at risk. Sight, listen, is your eye plus light. Hearing is your ears plus sound. You don't hear just because you have an ear. It is a union of that ear plus sound. Are we together? Just hang on one minute. Stop.
You are not hearing anything from me. Because although you have the ears, there is no sound. Are we together? Thank you. So, the Bible says the hearing. And the seeing eye put his son on the altar when he lifted the knife if he did not have this ear he would have killed his son he had the ear that could say go and the ear that could say stop Abraham would have killed his son not because it was the will of God for Isaac to die Isaac's survival literally dependent on the hearing ear so when you are claiming the blessing of Abraham make sure you understand everything Abraham had that really made him bless <laughs> I wish I had time tonight the hearing ear this is the miracle that many people do not have you want enlargement, you want to move from one level to the other. But most believers have not trained themselves. It says the spirit speaketh expressly that in the later time some shall depart from the faith and shall give heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of devils. But the, the point is the spirit speaketh expressly. The spirit speaketh expressly. But he only speaks and those who hear him are those who have the hearing ear. It can be the difference between your level here in business. It's not the product. It's the hearing ear. Have you mastered the technology of hearing the sounds of heaven? Oh Ezekiel, you can stand before those dry bones and not know what to say. Because we only prophesy as we hear commanded. Could it be that God said many things last year? You didn't move because you did not hear. You were dull of hearing. Listen, the way of the spiritual man is a delicate pathway. If you miss the hearing of God for a season, that can be the end of it. He lifted the knife. What God said yesterday, be sure it is still what he's saying now. It is the same God who said, take Isaac. But could it be he has said stop and you did not hear? It was the same God that said go to Durban. But could it be he has said come back? It was the same God that said start real estate. Could it be that he has now said go to oil and gas? The hearing ear. Many believers stay where God said. But do not stay where God is saying. Please listen. This is a very prophetic message. Abraham, take now thy son, thine only son whom thou lovest, and go and offer him as a sacrifice. He would have shut down his hearing. But even at the point of sacrifice, he knew. And he lifted the knife and he said, stop. For now I know that you fear me. He said, and in blessing, I swear by myself, in blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, I will multiply you. Listen to me. Please listen to me. I can tell you that most believers are where they are. Everything is right. Except that their ears have not been trained to hear. The next thing is the seeing eye. You may have the eye, but the light that helps you see is not there. The Bible says... When for sake of time, please listen carefully, is God speaking to you? When Abraham came to rescue Lot, his cousin, apostle, he got into Sodom and Gomorrah and when the men saw the angels, they wanted to sodomize them. Are we together? 
And Lord said, no, don't bring this kind of reproach against us. I will even give you my daughters. And they said, no, we want this man. And the Bible says the angels in anger drew Lot inside and struck the people with blindness. And then the Bible says they wearied themselves in front of the door. They were right in front of the door, but because they did not have the eyes. You can be right in front of the door. The season is right. You are in the right the location. miracle of open you eyes had right, has not been given but to just you. because the miracle of open eyes do. has not been given to you. Your says I shall not want thou shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way this is the way means there are other ways if that's the only way he cannot say this is the way there are many options all leading to several places some of you right now by this teaching if you really have the, the hearing ear, you will have to turn back because you've been walking on a path. God has been at the place saying, listen, can't you hear me? Your ministry should not be at this level. Your business should not be at this level. The problem is not membership. Stop blaming the wrong things. It is the lack of hearing and lack of seeing. Hallelujah. It took the hearing ear and the seeing eye for your man of God to leave his country and sojourn into another nation and remain there. It's a joke to take that kind of risk with your life. What if you found out you wasted your time? Behind the exploits of men, ladies and gentlemen, there is no light just because you are a prophet does not mean you are seen. Let me balance this now. So don't even make the mistake of believing. This kind of seeing is not a gift. This kind of seeing is a reward for doing business with God. You contend to a realm where he honors you. Shall I hide this from my friend Abraham? Seeing that he will be a great man. This is a product of intimacy with the spirit. No. This is not a, a, just a, a gift for your office. That man can walk with God. And out of the many rewards that he gives you. Is the seeing eye. That is why it is dangerous. To leave the issue of God in pursuing wealth. Or whatever it is. That is already dead on arrival. For as long as Uzziah sought the Lord, the Lord made him to prosper. Second Chronicles chapter 26 and verse 5. The Bible says that in the days he sought the Lord and for as long as he sought the Lord, the Bible says the Lord made him to prosper. Second Chronicles 26 and verse 5. As long as he sought the Lord, who made him to prosper? God made him to prosper. Go to verse 15 of the same verse. Let's read the last sentence, verse 15. The Bible says he works great and he became famous because he was marvelously helped of the Lord. Until he became strong. We don't just become strong. We are made strong. South Africa, please hear me. House of treasures, the body of believers excelling in this end time will be more than it would it will require more than a well-intentioned heart you will need to train your hearing and you will need to train your seeing 
there are many parents today who have led their children to paths that are inconsistent with God's program for their destiny because they did not have the seeing eye and the hearing ear. There are many people doing business today that they cannot secure the favor of God because that is not the blueprint of God for them. There are many people today who were doing what God said yesterday. That's why they prospered yesterday. But God said something else today. I told you the power of God follows what God is saying. So if God moved this way in 2000 and I align with him, you will see increase. But if God has moved this way and I refuse to move, are we together? Apostle, I heard God. You are right. But are you hearing God now? The Spirit speaketh expressly. Please, those of you in ministry, this is not a pastor's conference, but I want you to please, by the message of God, listen carefully. Do not get too familiar with the pathway that was given to you yesterday. God is dynamic and you must master the navigation system of the spirit. You must know when seasons come to an end. You must know when the, your relevance in physical locations come to an end. Not knowing this can cost you, you can abort 30 years of relevance because you missed a moment of sight. Watch this. I hope I'm not wasting your time. Listen to me. When Jesus resurrected apostle, the Bible says the disciples who had been trained under his mentorship, they came quickly because I want to show you now how to get the hearing and the seeing eye. Are we together? They came to the grave and looked and they did not see anything there. They went back in fear. But the Bible said a woman, a woman got to the sepulcher and she looked and she remained there. She didn't go. She kept looking and kept looking and kept looking and when she kept looking, she saw a man moving in the garden and she said, where have they taken my Lord? And she looked again. She said, Rabboni. She wanted to touch me. She said, do not touch me. But you have seen me indeed. Now because you have seen, I empower you. Go and tell them what you have seen. Listen. This is an, a prophetic adumbration of what God is doing in the church in the end time. There are people who have not been mandated to go because they have not stayed to see. It is only the one who saw the resurrected Christ. Don't tell me I saw the crucified Christ. Congratulations. But we are talking about the one who has risen. She saw. The disciples came to the same location. They didn't see anything. But now, Mary stood. She waited. Nothing else was important. She stayed there. And her reward for remaining was that she saw. And she was commissioned by reason of having a seen eye. Go to the disciples. The first person to announce the resurrection. Hallelujah. The Bible says Hagar, having been driven by Sarah and Ishmael, they were in the wilderness. She was about to die of test. Yet there was an oasis in that wilderness. But she could not see it. She was crying. The young lad was crying. And the Bible says the Lord heard the voice of the young lad. And he came to Hagar. What is this? I'm about to die. He said, no, look. And immediately she saw an oasis. When Abraham stopped at the command of God from killing his son, he said, where then will I get the sacrifice? And he said, look, all the while, there is a ram that has been there. Only God knows how many things are around you. But simply because of the absence of the seeing eye, The Lord just gave you a prayer request tonight. The seeing eye. Habakkuk said, I will stand upon my word and set myself up. That was the true light that lighted every ministry. That was the true light. 
Lord, where is my place? Where is my portion in South Africa? Where is my portion in, in the global events of things you are doing? You are a man of God. It's time to stop going around, just roaming around. Lord, where is my portion? What is it? Show me, reveal to me. What is the jurisdiction of my relevance and contribution as far as your program is concerned? Listen. God never designed for just a few people to be celebrated in life and ministry at the expense of others. But you are at the mercy of the correctness of your sight. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.